Hey, Autumn Athletes, Larry Sorensen here. And today I'm going to connect with Wendy Lauder, find out what makes her an Autumn Athlete that's not done yet. But before we do, remember, if you enjoy our content, please like, subscribe, and ding that bell for notifications. All right, let's get this thing started. Wendy, thanks so much for joining us today. Why don't you start us off with a little introduction of yourself? Uh, thank you so much for having me. My name is Wendy Lauder. I'm 40 years old. I live in Gatesville, Texas with my family. Um, we have four kids total, 21, 19, 15, and 14, three girls and one boy. I am 5'4", uh, currently 160 pounds, a little fluffy, <laughs> but uh, in the middle of cutting. I am a retired veteran, uh, combat veteran out of the Army. I was a truck driver, 88 Mike, and currently working as a zookeeper at an exotic ranch right here in Gatesville called Dragonstone Ranch. Well, first of all, I want to start by saying thank you for your service. And then I'd also like to ask you just to elaborate on that uh, time that you spent in the Army. And then also, you got to tell us a little bit about the zookeeper thing. What, what is that all about? I joined the Army um, right after my senior year, which was 9 It was the year of 9-11. And that's why I joined. From 2002 all the way to 2008, I was in the Army. I drew, did uh, two tours to Iraq as an 88 Mike, but uh, we were short on gunners, um, the gun trucks. So I actually ended up becoming a 50 cal gunner. My first rotation over there and my second rotation, I did do my actual job and hauled um, tanks is what we hauled. So I drove a heavy equipment transporter. And in 2008 is when I, uh, December 2008 is when I got out, medically retired out. They didn't want to uh, keep me in as a risk for some of the injuries and stuff that uh, I had acquired. And um, I also suffer from the PTSD as well. So once I got out of there, then it was figuring out where I belonged in the world. <laughs> So when did you then transition into zookeeping? That is actually very new. Just a few <laughs> months ago, we were kind of like just floating around trying to get into the personal training stuff. And I am not one to sit at home. I just can't do it. So I was like, I need to find something to do and happened to run into a friend of mine that knew the owners of the exotic ranch. And I was like, absolutely. I love animals. Uh, if I could, I'd own a zoo. So that is how I got into that, um, not knowing anything about it and, you know, jumped into it. And now I work with um, anything from as simple as hedgehogs to uh, sugar gliders, all the way up to hippos, uh, giraffes, lemurs, kangaroos. I mean, you name it, they've pretty much got it out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So obviously in the service, you know, you did some athletic stuff. Did you do anything athletically, you know, as a youth or up to through the service? Um, all through my high school years, I tried out one time for uh, volleyball. It didn't work out. So uh, <laughs> that was pretty much it. I did a little bit of bull riding. That was other than that. I didn't play any sports. Um, I absolutely had, hated running uh, in the military. <laughs> I only did it because I had to and got paid to do it. Um, and then I got into a looking into Spartan races probably about six years ago. And that's kind of what got me back into the running. Uh, I wasn't like dedicated to it. It was, I just wanted to do a Spartan race just to see if I could do it. And that was the first time that I kind of tried to slow down on drinking because I did become um, an alcoholic. Uh, so that is kind of what got me started in the direction. And then I lost that direction and did a little bit of weightlifting. But other than that, not knowing, I mean, just going in there and lifting weights, didn't have any programs, didn't really know what I was doing, just saying I can lift the weights. 2019 is really when you started uh, your athletic career, if you will. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about, you know, that interim, what happened, what changed in 2019 and, you know, what motivated you to make a, a lifestyle change and so forth? Just just kind of fill us in on that whole time frame leading up into, you know, now what you're doing. Absolutely. In uh, 2019, our two youngest girls, Cheyenne and Addison, um, at the time, I think they were like 11 and 12, uh, came to my husband and I, my husband's Robert, and um, sat us down in the living room one day and just pretty much said, we're sick of the drinking and we're sick of the fighting. And so we didn't really know what we were going to do at the time. We're like, you know, we're adults. Anybody else that tells us that, whatever, we've been to war, we've been back, we're going to do what we want to do. But uh, when it's your kids that come and tell you that it's a little bit of a, a two by four to the forehead. And so it took us a few months to figure it out. And it was November of 2020 
we went to my sister-in-law who also suffers from PTSD, but from verbal and abuse and stuff like that and being in a family of alcoholism. And we all kind of just sitting around the table and we're like, what are we going to do? Like, we're done with this. We're, we've got to figure out what's going to take our attention and keep us guiding you know, in, the, in the right path. And my husband, Robert, has always wanted to do a bodybuilding show. His sister and I are like, I mean, we don't want to, but hey, at least it gives us something to lock into. And so that's what we did. That November, we all said we're going to do a bodybuilding show. By December, we all had our own coaches. Um, my husband and I share the same coach. My sister had her, or my sister-in-law had her own. And then um, she did her first show in six months. I did mine in eight months and Robert did his in a year. And we have not looked back. You've been in these shows now and, and you continue Spartan racing as well, I presume, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. I um, just picked the Spartan racing and the Tough Mudders back up. It, you know, the two and a half years of training for the bodybuilding took a lot. So that was, everything was kind of really focused into that until my last show last year, which I went from wellness, three shows of wellness and kind of got pushed into figure. And I, it mentally really, really got to me. So I stepped away from the bodybuilding, well, the stage, I stepped away from the stage and continued to build the body that I wanted, which is what I started for in the first place. And kind of found my path of where I needed to be. And after my last show, I realized like a lot of my followers were really interested in, in my story and had been following me for a long time. And they could see, they could see what that last show did to me. So I just really locked into how I can help others while continuing to do what I love to do. And so that's, that's really what I locked into. And then I slowly started picking up here locally some people that I could help train, whether it was in the workouts or whether it was meal plans. And then it kind of picked up online. And so that's how we've been become um, online trainers. Tell us just a little bit more about the difference between the wellness figure and then uh, what you're doing now. And then maybe just touch on a little bit more detail as far as what was the mental issues you were having with the figure and, and what caused you to, to change direction a little bit? Absolutely. I picked wellness when I first started with bodybuilding because I'm already um, a, a lady that has a bigger bottom. So wellness kind of focuses on women that are built bigger in the hips down. So the, the glutes, the thighs, the hamstrings, that's kind of where their focus is. And I figured, well, I already had a good base. So that's where I went into um, as I trained, my shoulders obviously got bigger, the lower part got bigger, and I kept getting directed from my coach and other people that, you know, you could really do figure, you could do figure. And I was doing really well in wellness, but I wasn't seeing what I wanted to see quick enough, obviously, like we all do. So I was like, hey, let, let's just try figure. So that's what I did is I went ahead and went, um, I went from a wellness show and in six weeks transformed my body for a figure show and got on the stage, went up there with an amazing package. I looked great. I was happy with how I looked, but I was not comfortable in my own body, if that makes sense, because figure takes away from the legs and it takes away from the glutes, which I, this is what I had been training for. This is what I've been building. And I got off the stage and for the first time ever actually talked to the judges just to see what they had to say. This is where I literally imploded inside my my inside myself. When I got the two judges that were sitting next to each other, one comes up and says, oh no, when you came out, I saw wellness. And I'm like, okay. Then the next one says, no, your figure, you just need a small, you need smaller legs. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, why am I, why, what am I doing with myself right now? This is not why I'm here. It doesn't matter what I build. It just matters who's sitting in those two seats. And then it came to me what I tell my daughters, you know, when they come to, you know, home from school and they explain to me like mom, such and such said this, or they think this, or they're that. And I'm just like, don't worry about what other people think about you. That's not what life is about. You just need to worry about what makes you happy and not the opinions of others. And when I came home from that show, and, and I did, I went to a very dark place for about two weeks. My daughter pretty much said that to me, mom, like, why are you basing this off of 
people judging you. You're happy with what you did. So like, that's what it should be. And I was like, ha, duh. So um, it was too easy. It was too easy to step away from that because I had gotten lost. I got lost in something that I wasn't originally ever in love with doing. Like I didn't intentionally want to ever do that. I started it, I fell in love with it, and I unfortunately got very lost in why I was there. And that was to keep me away from, um, you know, a horrible addiction that I had had prior. And so that's that's what made me step back and really go for back to where I needed to be. And in the figure, like I said, they really wanted the more wider shoulders. And then it comes down to almost look like a trophy. Like that's the trophy look they wanted. And that's what really killed me when they told me my legs need to be smaller. I was like, I have spent my entire life hating my legs. I went into wellness love my legs now and then now you're telling me I need to change this so it was a lot of mind games and um if you're anybody that comes from an addiction and fixes you know and is able to fix that the last thing you need is something else that plays with your mind and your emotions mm -hmm. so so now are you back into the wellness category then I am building so what I tell people is I'm going to build the body I want which is the superhero look that's kind of what I'm going for and when I get on that stage, that's what I'm getting up there for. I don't care what those judges think or anything. I'll get on that stage to say I got on that stage building the body that I want to see on that stage. So yes, wellness is what I'm going back for. Um, now, whether I, you know, I've placed first, second and third in um, all of my wellness shows. My first one, I actually took first place. So uh my goal, hopefully one day, is to get a pro card, but it's definitely not something that I'm locked to and uh, into anymore because I've noticed since my last show, everything that I've done since then, I thought I could only get like this interview right here if I had a pro card. You know what I mean? So I just, I'm kind of past that. Like, I don't need to have that pro card because I am the pro card. Like I'm my walking billboard. So what are your uh, up and coming goals and or events that you're preparing for both in bodybuilding and in the Spartan racing? So in the bodybuilding, I haven't picked out a show yet um, because I just really haven't locked into the cutting process quite yet. I'm enjoying my food a little bit. Uh, and I do have a, another Spartan race in May. So trying to cut and get ready for a Spartan race, especially the one that I'm looking at, it's kind of like it, it'll take away from me. So I think um, I'm just going to keep training for that Spartan race. So I normally run three to five miles a day for that. Uh, the last Spartan race I did was a 5K with 20 obstacles, I was able to do in 46 minutes and 46 seconds, which uh, completely outdid my, I gave myself at least an hour. And I actually had um, a torn muscle as well while I was doing that race. So trying to get better, get that muscle a little bit better, get ready for that race. And then maybe by the end of the year, do another bodybuilding show. If not, definitely next year. Give us an idea of your general training regimen at this point. Um, in your uh, building process for both the Spartan and for bodybuilding? Right now, I work out about six to seven days a week. Um, I'm not really one to take a day off. I know that's a huge thing, uh, rest days for people, but I kind of just listen to my body. And then I try to do cardio every single day. Um, when I was training for bodybuilding, cardio was a huge thing with my trainer. And, you know, a lot of people are, are against the cardio, but I, it was kind of like you're fighting yourself, you're doing all this work, and then I'm, I'm doing 40 minutes of hardcore cardio at the same time. So some people kind of frown upon that, but I'm sticking to that. My coach was amazing. He was an IFBB pro and um, his training, you know, from oh, online, I never really got to meet him until about a year and a half in, but what he was able to do with my body just by pictures and communication um, that's what I'm continuing to do. So I do the weightlifting about six days, six to seven days a week, and cardio is at least five days a week. Take us to the gym for your favorite hardcore weightlifting routine. That's definitely going to be legs. <laughs> legs are approximately about um, close to two hours when I do do them. I am a really big on um, low weight high reps. So honestly, when people ask me like, oh my God, what do you, you know, squat? What do you bench? It's never impressive because it's very just 
you know, 135 is my squat. That's enough for me because I'm doing 20 at a time. You know, um, I'm very focused on time under tension. So my leg day, some people also frown upon this. I'll do double leg extension and then follow it up with single leg extension. Some people are like, well, that's, they call it trash because it's just about, you know, they say it's about me. You don't, you don't need. And uh, I'm like, yeah, well, it's up to you. It's, it's whatever you feel works for you. Um, I've tried doing the heavy lifting and I just didn't, I didn't enjoy it and I didn't get the feeling that I wanted from it. So the, I was, so like I said, I did the double leg extension, then I'll do single leg extension. I'll go straight into leg press. Then I do hack squat, reverse hack squat, Smith machine squat. And then um, my favorite is sumo uh, deadlifts. <laughs> so those are my, one of my big favorites, but that's, that's just an example of, of leg day. You mentioned time under tension. What does that mean? When I explain that time under tension is um, it's just like when you're doing a squat, um, to me, it's I take my time, I go down slowly, and then I come up slowly. Like it's just you really want to, to connect to what muscles you're working. And so mind and muscle connection as well. So time under tension, mind and muscle are two things that work in one. Two different meanings, same meaning at the same time, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so it's when you're doing a bicep curl, you go down, you're going to go down slow and then you're going to extend all the way and then you're going to come up slow. Like that's the time under tension. And then you don't want to, you don't ever want to lock out. You know, you want to keep it right before you're going to, you lock out is where you just keep that tension and that time. And so it's constantly working. Tell us a little bit about your approach to diet and nutrition. So diet and nutrition is 90% of my results. That's the honest to God truth. When people ask me what your secret is, I tell them nutrition. And of course, nobody ever wants to hear that. I can tell you for the first two and a half years, um, Robert and I ate the exact same thing every single day for those two and a half years. Um, and our, our for that, for the bodybuilding to get us where we wanted as quickly as we wanted, we pretty much stuck to chicken. Uh, that was our number one protein. Once in a while, we'd get some white fish or some lean steak, but that was very rare. Um, and then our greens were most of the time asparagus, spinach, green beans, or broccoli. And the only carbs, if we were allowed to have carbs, was red potato, sweet potato, and jasmine rice. And that was my, our uh, coach is very old school. So he didn't do all like the fancy colors, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So our, it was very basic and it worked for us as well. At that time, um, our jobs, we moved portable buildings at that time. I have had some weird, crazy jobs. So, but uh, we moved the big portable buildings that you can put in your backyard. So we were in the truck all the time, 14 hour days, 14 to 16 hour days. So it just made it real simple. And then for both of us doing this at the same time, to meal prep, that was easy. So every sun, every Sunday was get 15 to 20 pounds of chicken, you know, and the same with your asparagus, your spinach, whatever you chose to do, and you cook it all out and it's prepared for the week. And it was just too easy to say, I can't eat it because, you know, it's not prepared. Well, it is prepared. So there's no reason for you to not eat it. So um, our nutrition at that time was very simple, but very repetitive um, and definitely not uh, something that you can, you know, obviously it's not a lifestyle to live off of that. If you're not into the bodybuilding and stuff like that. Now we pretty much stick to just the same thing, high protein, low carb, and, um, we're able to eat mindfully instead of having to weigh everything out. Now we are about to cut, uh, see, he's got a model shoot coming up. And then of course I've got some stuff coming up as well, as long as the races and we have a biking show that we're going to be doing. So we do have to cut. So we will be preparing for those using our bodybuilding nutrition, our, our plan for cutting. So right now, do you really have a, a macro plan at all? I mean, do you have a, uh, a calorie count? Do you have a gram protein count or anything? Or so just, we, just I don't, yeah, just pretty much eating just because, um, like I said, we we're sticking to pretty much what we ate before. So we've become very good at just looking at something and just about knowing, but no, we're not, we don't do, I don't do macros at all. I just don't have the patience for that. Um, <laughs> but so basically we just go by ounces, honestly. So like normally my plate would be like three ounces, three to four ounces of protein, three ounces of carbs and a, at the most four ounces of uh, veggies, you know, if 
depending on what we're eating. So that's, that's pretty much how I do it. So if you are going to have a little fun uh, and balance the life out just for a moment, what's your go-to cheat meal or dessert? Every single Friday, we do uh, barbecue chicken pizza and wings. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that is our, our go-to. Like, that's our thing to do. I do the uh, pepper, it was a lemon pepper wings, and he does the Cajun. And then we just do one big uh, barbecue chicken pizza. Our kids are like, really? Every Friday? <laughs> so. In your fitness uh, journey here, would you have done anything differently now looking back on it? So I'm one that doesn't live with regrets. Uh, so because I think like if you do, then where you are now, you regret where you are now. Uh, but if I would have known a little bit more about the mental part of the bodybuilding, I don't think I would have let and got to as far as it got. And, and trusting, you know, the ones that surround you when you're doing bodybuilding too. Um, because in this lifestyle, your circle gets extremely small because it's just something that a, a lot of people just don't understand if they're not doing it and or they just don't want to be around it because they're not comfortable like especially if you're not drinking or you're not want to eat what they're eating so that is something i think that i would have definitely paid a little bit more attention to um of who allowing you know who i'm going to allow into my circle and not allowing it to mentally get to me as much as it did so how long have you been sober Three years. Okay. So. Well, congratulations on that, first of all. <laughs> so, you know, that along with everything else that you're doing, you know, what would you say is your secret sauce? Our girls, the day that they came to us, I mean, is is embedded into my head. So that is like the number one when the when the tunnel gets dark, they're the light at the end of it. And and remind uh, you know, me of why we started this. Mm -hmm. Um now since it's grown and um you know, my story is not my story anymore. My journey has become hundreds of people's story, you know, something that they're following. So my, my followers and the people that support me honestly keep me going every single day. Um, I'm getting, you know, endless comments, notifications, messages telling me how I've changed their life or I've given them motivation or I've, you know, and a few of them are, are no longer alcoholics because of uh, them watching my journey. So that is the endless, I guess, candy jar. Like they just keep putting, they just keep filling it up for me and I can just pick from it, you know, on the days that I, I feel like I need to. Speaking of your followers, tell us about your social media presence and where can we find you? I am on uh, TikTok. I'm on Instagram and on Facebook. On Facebook, I'm uh, just Wendy and Louder, nothing real serious, but we uh, actually do have, also have Earn Not Given, which is our... It, that's our page, the name of our page and the name of our business. On Instagram, it's turbo wings under slash DP. And then on uh, TikTok, it's Wendy Turbo Wings 14. <laughs> My daughter set that one up. <laughs> so we're going to switch gears just a little bit, have some fun and do a little rapid fire questionnaire so that we can get to know a little bit more fun stuff about you. All right. Sound good? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this one, but what would you say is your favorite bench squat or run squat <laughs> yeah you know i wrote this up earlier so I knew that. you're going on vacation and you know there's certain things you know you got to have packed you that's the first thing that comes in your mind so of these items which comes to your mind first heels casual or athletic shoes athletic shoes <laughs> yeah kind of figured that one too you see these are too easy all right uh, how about your favorite movie Oh, that's a hard one. Um, Sandlot. All right. What would be your go-to maybe or your favorite to do? Compound bar lifts or isolation dumbbell lifts? Uh, isolation dumbbell lifts. And then how about your favorite color? Blue. Easy. That's an easy one. Light blue <laughs> or dark blue? Um, sapphire blue. So like a darker blue. So I, I noticed in a couple of pictures you sent me this like Viking outfit stuff. What What is that? Tell us quickly what that's all about. Uh, that's the Re Renaissance Festival here in Texas. Um, Robert and I actually and the family are real big on going to them. Um, it's medieval time and you can kind of dress up however you want, honestly. But uh, we always pick the Vikings. So we actually got picked up last year to be flown in July to Ohio to be openers for a new Viking video game. 
Huh. And take our outfits and and go there and and uh, interact with the kids and all that. So, Wendy, thanks so much for joining us today, telling us what makes you an autumn athlete that's not done yet. We really appreciate the time. I want to close up here with giving you the opportunity to address our audience and give us some final thoughts. I guess all I can say is, if you are thinking about getting into this lifestyle, whatever it may be, whether it's bodybuilding, uh, racing, just working out, um, just find your why. That's the most important thing. Find your why so that you always can turn to it on the days that you feel like you just can't do it or you don't want to do it. Um, and there's no excuses. There are absolutely no excuses. You can find those minutes to take care of yourself. And that's what's most important. Just find that why and hit that goal and go for it. Outstanding advice from Wendy Ann Louder. She is definitely an autumn athlete that's not done yet. Remember, keep moving, set your own goals and train hard to achieve them. Thanks so much for watching. And we will see you next time. Thank you.